What is going on everyone? In this video, we're gonna be talking about the factory pattern in the context of this book, which is Head First Design Patterns. And this video is part four of a video series that I'm doing on every design pattern from this book. Uh, so previously I've done the observer pattern, the decorator pattern, and another one as well. But if you're interested in watching those videos, I'll put them down below. But today we're gonna to be talking about the factory pattern. And I'm particularly excited about this video because I personally feel that the factory pattern is one of the most useful design patterns in all of software design. And I say that because um, it's one that I tend to use the most frequently. Um, it simplifies your code in a lot of different ways. And we're gonna see some examples of that in a few moments here. So in terms of the agenda of this video, first I'm just gonna define what the factory pattern is as per the definition of this book. Just talk about it a little bit and just make sure that you grasp the concept and just do a quick little prototype example just to show you exactly what I mean. Uh, from there, we're gonna go into some more sophisticated class diagrams using a different example. And then I'm gonna show you how you actually implement it using Java as a programming language. And for that part, I'm going to bring you over to my IDE. So as per the definition in this book, the factory pattern defines an interface for creating an object, but let subclasses decide which class to instantiate. Factory methods let a class defer instantiation to subclasses. So let's tease this definition apart a little bit. In the beginning, we're saying that we want to define an interface for object creation. So right off the bat, we know that we're gonna be creating an object that contains logic on how to create other objects. Uh, so that's the first part of the factory pattern. It's essentially a, a object that knows how to construct other ones and it has you know specific logic that's built in it so that it can do it pretty intelligently. And the second part says that the factory method lets a class defer instantiation to subclasses. And what this is essentially saying is that you can let subclasses decide which type of object that you wanna create. The factory can just define the interface that you want the subclasses to follow, but it doesn't necessarily know how these subclasses uh, implement or the core logic that exists within those subclasses. So this was a pretty crude definition. I don't expect you to understand the factory pattern just based off that. Uh, so now I, what I wanna do is just go through a, a pretty trivial example of uh, what I call the simple factory pattern or the, the most basic factory pattern that you can define while still being able to call this a factory pattern. Um, so let's assume that we're working with an example where we're working in the domain of uh, credit card transactions. So let's say in this problem, you have two types of transactions. Uh, the first one is a purchase transaction, purchase, purchase. And the second is a refund transaction refund transaction. You know, you're buying stuff or you're refunding stuff. Now let's say that you are building an API, right? And your API uh, is going to take in one of these two different types, either a purchase or a refund. Maybe this API is called uh, process uh, transaction, right? So let's name this thing process transaction. Transaction. And let me just grab a different color here to indicate the payload. So let's say the, the contract of this API, like by the way, this is an API, if that's not already clear. Uh, it takes a input argument called type, right? And type can be a string and that can be either, you know, a purchase or a refund, right? So this is all well and good. We have this, this API here that takes in a type and you know it's focused on the purchases and refunds. So let's say now that we need to write our handler of this API, right? And the handler is just gonna be the basic entry point for when this uh, function is called. So what do we need to do here first in this handler? Well, our, our prerogative is to create the correct type of object that maps to these different uh, enum values that are being passed into the API. Um, so the, one of the first steps that we're going to do in this handler function is we're going to say, you know, if, um, you know, a type is equal to purchase, type equals purchase. You know, you're going to return a new purchase transaction or a purchase object, right? And then similarly, you're going to have a, another line here or an else if that also says if type is equal to a refund, then you return a new refund transaction. 
new refund transaction. So what we're doing in this example is that we're using these different if statements here so that we can correctly determine which object type to create. Now there's nothing inherently wrong with the way that we're doing this. This is 100% correct. Uh, what we're doing here, you know, with these if statements. And this is actually how you implement the, the factory pattern, even it's in its more complex form. But this is the general idea of it. And what you would typically do in the factory pattern implementation would, would be, you wouldn't have this, uh, let me just mark here that this is your, you know, your, your handler's um, main entry point. You wouldn't have this code in your handler's main entry point. You would kind of take all this stuff out and put it into a class, and then the handler function would call a method on this class so that it can create the right type. So this is the you know top level idea of the factory pattern. It, its goal is to encapsulate object creation in another object. So that you know in this example, in our handler function here, we don't need to worry about the mechanics of how to create our objects. We just need to know that, hey, if we need to create an object, all we do is we call this function in this method and it's gonna give us back the right type based on the type that we pass in. And that's the general idea of the factory pattern. And if you think about this, like what, what I just described to you, I'm sure that you face this type of problem through your own coding adventures. You know, like this is a very, very common thing where you're given some kind of type and you need to figure out what to do next with it and which object to create. So right off the bat, you can start seeing the value of this thing. You may not have known that this is a design pattern. You may have already been doing this in your code, but you know, this is the, the, the building block of the factory pattern. Now, this isn't the complete factory pattern. This is what I call the simple factory pattern, but this, this approach does have some problems. So let's think about uh, some hypothetical examples here. Um, let's say we introduce like a new type. Maybe it's like a modification, right? Modification, and I apologize for my writing here in advance. It's really hard to use a tablet and write on the computer as it turns out. But anyways, say we introduce like this new type here. And what, what do we have to do now in this handler function to make it work? Well, it's pretty obvious, right? We just need to add another if statement. If type is equal to, um, you know, modification. I'm not, not going to write out everything here. You know what I'm saying? Um, then you're going to have to return a new modification. But this approach violates an important design principle. It's the O in the solid principles. And if you don't know what those are, go and check out my first video on design patterns because uh, I talk about them quite a bit. But what this violates is the open-close principle. And what the open-close principle says is that objects should be open for extension and closed for modification. They should be open for extension and closed for modification. Now I've used the word modification here. That was not deliberate actually. I just made this up on the spot and it happened to be the same word. But uh, let, let me describe what the, this, um, this open close principle means in the context of this example. Well, now every time we want to create a new type of transaction, we need to go into this low level code. Well, it's not very low level, but we need to go into this code and modify it. So this violates the open close principle because we need to you know, go inside and modify it so we're not closed for modification. We are, in this case, open for modification, which is a bad thing from the open close design principle perspective. Now, the way that you can get around this problem and still adhere to the O in the solid principles, well, there's two approaches actually. The first one is using inheritance and the second one is using composition. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the inheritance form of the factory pattern. Uh, and in the next one, I may talk about the composition form of the factory pattern, which is a little bit more complicated, but I just wanna make sure that you get the idea here and you could start applying this stuff to your daily work. So just to recap everything that we talked about here, the factory pattern is for object creation delegation, and it's useful so that we can offload the responsibility of how, the mechanics of how to create an object to another class whose sole responsibility is to know how to create objects. That's the factory pattern in pretty much one or two sentences. So let's scroll down a little bit and I wanna to talk to you for a few moments about um, the example that's used in this book because that's the one that we're gonna be using uh, to go through the code in my IDE in a few moments. And the example is a little bit different. They are using like a pizza shop example. Uh, and we're just gonna kind of run with that and show you what the factory pattern looks like in this example. So if you're reading the book and you're following along, this 
should be pretty relatable. Um, so in this example, we are working in the domain of like a pizza shop, a pizza store, right? And so we have like right away, we have a couple key entities. Let me start over here actually. So we have a pizza object, right? And this is like the, the low level object that we're gonna be creating instances of. Uh, and this isn't gonna be like a, a complete class diagram here. This is just going to be some quick notes that I throw together. Uh, so keep that in mind if you're reading this. Now a pizza has different methods that need to be performed on it. So the first step is to prepare the pizza. This could be like rolling out the dough. The second one is to bake the pizza. So actually throw that in the oven. And the third is to cut the pizza. And the last one is to box the pizza, right? So these are the four main operations that we perform on a pizza in order to make one, right? And in this example, the pizza is going to be an abstract class, abstract class. And we're working in Java here. So if you don't know abstract classes, they're kind of like interfaces, except that they let you do some more interesting things like uh, define um, default implementations of some of these methods. Um, and they can be overridden by the subclass if you wish. Uh, so in this example, we, we have this, this pizza object here, right? And so in this example, um, we want to create different variations of pizza. And, and in the book, they use like this chain example where there's different types of chains. So there could be like a New York chain where like a New York style pizza or a Chicago style pizza is like a very deep dish pizza. And maybe like an Italian chain where you typically get very thin crust and very crispy style pizza. And those are different types of pizzas. They may have the same properties in terms of, you know, the same toppings, but they are different types. And maybe there's different ways to actually create those pizzas in terms of the dough, the cooking time, all that kind of stuff. So in the, in the book, they go through how to kind of set this, this structure up. And so what they suggest is to create two different subclasses of the pizza. So we have a New York pepperoni pizza, New York pepperoni pizza and a New York cheese pizza, right? And you can obviously add many, many more examples of this, but let's just keep it to two in this example, uh, just to keep things simple. Now we have a relationship like this. So New York pepperoni implements the pizza inner or the pizza abstract class, I should say. So the New York cheese and the New York pepperoni, they need to define how to actually prepare, bake, cut and box. Right, because they could be different depending on which type of subclass is actually implementing the pizza abstract class. Um, so that's the main idea here. And you can imagine what this looks like if you add multiple different chains or multiple different franchises here. You can add like an Italian one out over here, and then now it can uh, implement the abstract class. You can add a uh, Chicago one out over here. And this kind of goes back to what I was telling you about before with the open close principle. So we're not using any kind of modification here to create new types. We're just extending the pizza by creating new instance types through this inheritance relationship. Uh, so, so far we haven't really got to the point where we actually uh, use the factory method or the factory pattern. We're just kind of setting up the classes so that we can work with them in a co coherent way uh, later on. So just to, to kind of emphasize here. So New York pepperoni, New York cheese, these are both concrete classes, concrete classes. So you're going to be instantiating these two. Now in parallel, what you have going on is this concept of a pizza store, pizza, pizza store, right? And this entity is going to be in essence, your factory. Right. And you can call this a factory like you can call this a pizza factory or, you know, whatever you want. Like if, if it makes sense to use the name factory, like I don't think it actually does in this case. But basically, whatever object is going to be responsible for object creation or, or containing the logic for creating these objects, that's your factory uh, object. And in this case, it happens to be a pizza store. And with our pizza store, we're going to have two different types of methods. We're going to have the order pizza method order pizza method and this is going to take the type and if it's you know cheese pepperoni whatever it's not going to know like a new york style and it's not going to know a new york pepperoni but it's just going to know like cheese or pepperoni so let me just underline those just so that it's clear that's what's being passed in here not the new york style pizza uh, so that's going to be the first method and then the second one is going to be create pizza and i'll explain to you why we have these 
two different things in a moment here. Just one, let me get this hashed out. Type. There we go. And of course, there's a siren right now. All right, so that finally passed, thank goodness. Now, going into why we have these two different methods, so let's talk about that for a moment. So in our pizza store or in our, in our example in general, we always have the same sequence of operations that take place. We always want to prepare the pizza first, then we want to bake it, then we want to cut it, then we want to box it, right? And that is consistent across any type of pizza. It doesn't matter if it's a New York style pizza, a pepperoni style pizza, an Italian pizza, Chicago pizza, that pattern stays the same and it never changes. So what the order pizza method is gonna be responsible for is it's gonna be calling a method that, which is the create pizza method and passing along the type. It's going to get an instance of your pizza object and then perform these steps, one, two, three, and four. So it's gonna call the prepare method, it's gonna call the bake method, it's gonna call the cut method, and it's gonna call the box method before it finally returns that object back. So the create pizza method, this is actually the, the important bit here because this is essentially the, the factory method that you're gonna be um, using to store the logic of, you know, if pepperoni, then create a pepperoni pizza, if cheese pizza, then create a cheese pizza, so on and so forth. So what's going to happen here is that the order pizza method in the, well, this is an abstract class. Perhaps I should have mentioned this before. We're going to have a subclass here that gives us more granularity on the type of pizza. I'll get to that in a moment. Um, but in our pizza store method, because we're following the same operations, generally for most types of pizzas, we can implement the order pizza method to perform these four things in sequence. So these are both gonna be abstract methods, but the key is that this one is going to be implemented in the pizza store abstract class, implemented. And this one is not going to be implemented. So it's gonna be up to the subclass to define the create pizza method. Now that's important and I'm gonna show you why in the next step. So that was the setup. Now there's one key element that I left out and you're probably wondering like, how do we connect, you know, the concept of New York cheese style pizzas with this concept of the pizza store? Like how do we tell it to create New York style pizzas or Italian style pizzas or Chicago style pizzas or whatever, right? Well, the way that we do that is we have different subclasses that implement the pizza store abstract class. So in order to create New York style pizzas, we have a New York pizza store, New York pizza store, right? And this is a child class of the pizza store. Uh, so I believe the arrow goes in this direction. And so what happens here in this relationship is that the New York style pizza store, as you may recall, it needs to implement the create pizza method and it needs to handle the different types that New York style pizza supports. So in this case, it, it supports pepperoni and it supports cheese. So what it'll actually do is in its kind of create pizza method that it's going to define, it's gonna have, you know, if it's pepperoni, then you create a New York pepperoni pizza. And if it is cheese, then you create a New York cheese pizza. And you can quickly see where I'm going with this. And let me just um, kind of backpedal on those so I can clean up the diagram a little bit here. You can create other ones as well, like the Italian pizza store, Italian pizza store, right? And, and use the same kind of pattern now. And uh, the Italian pizza store follows the same pattern. It implements the pizza store and it defines its own create pizza uh, method. And then that can create the Italian pizzas. So Italian pepperoni. And then your um, Italian pizza store is gonna be instantiating instances of the Italian pepperoni pizza. So this is the essence of the factory pattern. So just a recap on everything we talked about here before we get into the actual code in the IDE. So we're working in a pizza shop example. We have a pizza abstract class and that has four different methods and that includes prepare, bake, cut, and box. Uh, we have different types of pizzas that implement this abstract or extend this abstract class, I should say. Uh, New York style pepperoni, New York style cheese, and any other type uh, that is specific to a certain style or franchise. And separately from that, we have a pizza store, which acts as a factory in this example. 
And we have, and this is abstract by the way. And the methods are, there's two methods. One is order pizza, which has a default implementation, which prepares, bakes, cuts, and boxes the pizza in that sequence. It also calls the create pizza method of the underlying subclass, which knows internally how to create the different variations of pizza, whether that's a New York cheese or a New York pepperoni. And of course that depends on the type of a factory in this case because you know the italian pizza store and the new york pizza store are the subclasses of the factory class which is the pizza store in this example so i hope this was clear and if it wasn't don't worry about it because we're going to go into the code now and i'm going to show you exactly how this works uh, using just a basic setup for a java application so here we go all right guys so here we are in my ide uh, so I have two little examples that I just wanted to show you. The first form is the super basic example that is similar to uh, what I was showing you in the purchase transaction, refund transaction at the beginning of the video, just to show the most basic form of the factory pattern. I call it the simple factory pattern. And by the way, I'm going to be making all this code available. So if you want to you know, play with this, I'm going to put the link uh, on GitHub in the description section below. So you can check it out there. Uh, so let me just show you this example really quick before we get into the other example, which is a little bit more sophisticated. Um, so uh, ignore this stuff up here, which is our runner. Uh, so bear with me here. I have a couple different classes that are defined here, but I want to explain uh, each one of them to you. Uh, so we have our abstract pizza class. We have our pepperoni pizza, which extends pizza. We have our cheese pizza, which extends pizza as well. And then we have our, our factory method here, our factory class. And this has one method. Uh, it takes the pizza type, which can be, in this case, pepperoni, cheese. Maybe you want it to be veggie, anything else. Uh, and as I'm kind of calling out here, there's nothing wrong with this, but it violates the open-close principle. And we saw an application of that in the, the um, Blackboard example that I was just showing you. Uh, so if you see what this looks like, it's very, very simple, right? You just look at the different types here that are being passed in and return the new instance as it matches the type that's passed in. And if we look at the runner really quick, what are we essentially doing? Well, we're creating an instance of our pizza factory, which in the example before was the pizza store. And then we're just, you know, creating an instance and then we're calling the make pizza method. And then we're, we're getting a method we're getting an instance of the pepperoni pizza because we passed in pepperoni. Uh, so that is the most simple implementation of the factory pattern. Let's move on now to the example that we were demonstrating the second half with um, the pizza store and everything that's involved there. So let me minimize that and we're gonna go into standard here and let's walk through all the classes. So let me expand all these guys out so that you can see. So first of all, we have our pizza class. Uh, this was our top level entity and it has these public abstract methods. So prepare, bake, uh, cut and box. And if you're not familiar with Java, if you're using abstract here and you're defining it in this way, you're basically saying that the subclasses much, must define this, uh, these methods uh, in order for the program to compile. So then we also have these two uh, types of pizzas. In this example, we just have two types for New York. I'm just kind of organized this in a pretty coherent uh, class structure. So if we take a look at the pepperoni style pizza now, we can see that the uh, New York style pepperoni extends pizza. It calls the prepare method or defines the prepare method, I should say. And, you know, we're not doing anything sophisticated in here, but you can imagine where preparing a New York style pizza is very different than preparing an Italian style pizza, uh, so on and so forth. And that can be different for each of these different methods here. Uh, and I'm kind of hinting at that in the next example where I introduced this concept uh, for the cheese pizza of toppings. So say you had like a toppings array that um, defines um, the ingredients or the toppings for this pizza. So in the New York cheese pizza, you may add extra cheese because that's what's specific about New York style pizzas. Or if it's a Chicago pizza, it may be thick crust. So you may have to define a property uh, giving information about the crust and, and say that for the Chicago style, it's a thicker crust. Uh, so that's the general idea here, but they're basically following the same kind of pattern. Uh, if we look at the pizza store, which was, uh, if you recall, the kind of most important part of this equation. So it is a abstract class. It's got the order pizza method and the create pizza method. And it's got a default implementation of order pizza. And the first thing it's doing is calling the create pizza method. 
And the reason why this is important is because the pizza store is going to be subclassed by the New York style pizzas, Chicago style pizzas, whatever. But this method does not need to know, the order pizza method does not need to know how to create the pizza. It just knows the order of operations. So it doesn't know how to create the instance. It just knows how to operate on the instance. So that's where the real key here. So this thing here, this create pizza method, which is not given a default implementation is the key to this puzzle. Uh, so as we see here, you're just creating the instance type and you're, you're calling your operations on it and returning that back. Now, if we look at the New York pizza store, this is where that kind of uh, pseudocode if statement from the beginning of the video kind of comes into play. And this doesn't really change all that much. You usually need some, some kind of branching logic or a switch statement so that you can create the right type. Um, but this is the general idea of the factory pattern. So now you're gonna pass in the type obviously and correctly return the corresponding pizza type. Uh, so if we take a quick look at our runner here, what are we actually doing? So we're creating an instance of our pizza store and we're referring to the concrete class implementation. And then we're saying our, our pepperoni pizza, and we're gonna say New York pizza store dot order pizza and that's gonna be pepperoni. And if we run this guy, what we should see on the right here, uh, let me just pull over my terminal so you can see. Um, we're preparing the New York style pizza, we're baking the New York style pizza, we're cutting it and we're boxing it. Uh, so this was the factory pattern. This is how it works, why it's useful, and something that you should probably be using in your code because it's useful in so many different contexts. So if you enjoyed this video and you're interested in this book, I'm gonna put a link to this down below. There's a couple folks that are actually following along with me as I make videos on these, so I'd encourage that um, if you're interested in learning more and just getting more familiar with some of these topics. And the next video that I'll do is probably gonna be on the part two of the factory pattern, which is the abstract factory pattern. Um, so pay attention for that. I'll put that in the description section below when it is available. But in the meantime, check out my other ones on the other design patterns because I guarantee you're gonna learn something. And one last thing, please don't forget to like and subscribe because it really, really helps out with growing the channel. Thanks so much guys, and I'll see you next time.